Okay, should be live now. Okay. Okay. Ah, dalam ni macam belum lagi. Entulah. Dia ada, dia ada 30 second uh, berkurang delay, dia punya delay tu berkurang 30 saat lah. Hmm. Okay. Alright, so dah keluar. Dah keluar okay. Ha, ah, dah keluar dah dekat, <laughs> dekat YouTube. Dah keluar dah. So, maybe try... Uh, apa tu? Tapi kenapa saya sengit dekat dalam YouTube tu? Uh, Cakap kalau saya pandang depan. Dia, remember dia ada 30 second punya uh, delay lah. Delay lah. Ha. Okay. Ah, Jasmine, Wan Jasmine dah masuk. <laughs> saya buang WhatsApp side. Kalau depan ni nampak, ah okay. Saya tak boleh pandang saya punya ni lah. <laughs> Bila saya pandang ha. saya punya iPad dia macam ha, saya sengit. Nampak pandang tepi kan. Hmm. Hai, Assalamualaikum Zaid. Assalamualaikum Dr. Wan, Jasmine, uh, Zaid. We are Tak macam ni lah. Testing the system. Okay, betul. Ram, nampak lambat sikit. Haa, ah, Prof. Hazman. Prof. Hazman, orang kuat, M, orang kuat MQA ni. <laughs> Thank you, Prof. Hazman for joining. Ah, on the screen, you can see your name. Prof. Hazman. Uh, we have Prof. Hazman here. We have Jasmine, Dr. Jasmine. Dr. Uh, Dr. Jasmine, one Jasmine. Uh, Dr. Wan Jasmine, daripada mana? Uh, from where? You are from which uh, university? Yeah, we are just testing. We will start uh, exactly at 3. So, we are testing the Prof. system. Prof. Shah. Yeah, Prof. Azman Shah is from... Uh, is, um... So, we have our friend Zaid here. Assalamualaikum, Zaid. Thank you for joining. Uh, so please stay with us. Uh, we are testing the system uh, before we start uh, at three. Yeah. So as I say, while here, please share more about how to use YouTube for <laughs> webinar. <laughs> Uh, basically, I'm using uh, YouTube Live. Um, I set up YouTube Live using my uh, streaming application called Ecamm. Uh, I will share about Ecamm uh, shortly. Encoding uh, software. What do you mean by encoding software, Zaid? You mean the, the streaming streaming application I'm using now? Uh, I'm using uh, eCam. Let me show you. Um, I'm using eCam. Where is my eCam? Yeah, I'm using this one, uh, Zai. eCam Live. Um, this one is only available for Mac, Mac uh, user. But for PC, you can use OBS. OBS, uh, let me... Dr. Azida, can you see my screen? Uh, uh, no, no. I'm using, I'm sharing my web browser. Boleh nampak tak? Uh, dekat dalam my one, I cannot see but... Oh, maybe it will come a bit late. Okay. Maybe it will come a bit late. Uh, okay, now I can see. Uh, in YouTube. Uh, browser, yeah, my browser. Yeah, browser, yeah. Can you see my browser? In my Skype, no, hmm? but in uh, the YouTube live, I can see. I'm still seeing your face at the moment. Oh, yeah? mm.
You don't see my browser? No. I'm sharing my yeah. browser, yeah. my Chrome, Chrome browser, Chrome uh, screen. You don't see, eh? No. Hmm. So, hmm. during during the so during the Skype, maybe you cannot share the screen. But but in the YouTube channel, I can see. Yeah. But only the, I can see the on on my on my iPad. I can see the screen that I'm sharing now. Yes, yes. OBS can apa? But OBS I can see studio. from Skype. Skype no. Ah, from Skype cannot. From Skype cannot. Yeah. But if you are using, okay. it should be it should appear on on the screen. Uh, yeah. The audience should see, see my I, browser. I, OBS Studio. Yes. Uh, Zaid, I'm using. Uh, if for PC for PC use, user. For PC user, can use OBS to do uh, live streaming to YouTube. Dr. Abbas, thank you for joining. Uh, we are still testing. We are stand on the standby mode. Um, can you hear me? Uh, can you, you can hear us, uh, Dr. Abbas? So we are testing. We are standby. We are on the standby mode before three. Before we will, um, we will start exactly at three p.m. So we can see uh, Chi Chin Yi Wa, uh, Chin Yi Wa. Uh, are you from USM or from other universities? Uh, Chin Yi Wa, Doctor Chin, right? Oh, Wan Jasmine is actually Dr. Wan Hasma. <laughs> uh, Wan Hasma, Wan yeah. Hasma from BPIK. BPIK. Yeah. So, Pro Hasman, he is here. Pro, uh, yeah, the Zaid is here. So, Zaid, for your information, uh, I'm, I'm doing a streaming, live streaming from my Mac using Ecamm Live. But if you are, if, if you are interested to use, uh, uh, if you if you want to do live streaming on PC, uh, this application called OBS Studio is very very popular. It's free, uh, it's very powerful, but the learning curve is a bit steep. But it's not that difficult. There's a lot of tutorial on YouTube. Um, give it give it a try. Uh, so we have Doctor. Ali Baksh, uh, Dr. Abbas lah, Dr. Abbas. So, Dr. Abbas kata salam, Prof. Azida. Waalaikumsalam, <laughs> warahmatullah. So, Zaid kata, once install, how does it start? Uh, yeah, well, you, by using OBS uh, or any streaming software, the, the, the beauty of uh, OBS is uh, or ecam like what i'm using now you can set many scenes so that you can switch between one scene to another scene uh, easily so you can have one scene showing your webcam another another scene sh showing your maybe another uh, camera another scene using your web browser create another scene to show your powerpoint so that's uh, actually the the beauty of uh, using um, live streaming software uh, you become like one one man or one woman kind of uh, production uh, one man what we call it or one man uh, show <laughs> one man show so uh, currently you are looking at scene number five on my screen which is the browser so i'm going to switch to scene number four which is my powerpoint Okay. Um, okay, this is my PowerPoint and that is scene number four, which I, I just use uh, I just use a keyboard shortcut to switch between one screen to another screen or one scene to another scene. And I'm going to switch to scene number three, which is showing a small video of me. Yeah. Okay, you see uh, scene number three here. 
uh, which is um, my face uh, in a computer on the iMac computer that is scene number three then okay now I'm going to uh, switch to scene number two which is another scene here showing me on uh, another Mac iMac uh, computer and scene number one which basically showing me and now I have Dr. Azidah as a guest okay so I have four or I have five scenes set up on my uh, webcam uh, so, sorry set up on my session here okay so uh, of course you can create as many scenes as possible because um, but uh, probably you don't, don't you don't want to create too too many scenes yeah okay suara tak dengar prof tak dengar ah dengar nampak mulut je bergerak eh alamak nampak ah boleh dengar boleh dengar tak sekarang nah sekarang okey <laughs> aduh oi okay another one minute uh, so let's see uh, we have zaid we have uh, dr sharifa ruzaina Dr. Sharifah Huzaina Said Aris. Do you know her, Dr. Azida? Yes. Of course, we know her. Dr. Sharifah, welcome uh, from UITM. Orang uh, kuat UITM. <laughs> Dr. Adip, thank you for joining our Q&A session this afternoon. So, uh, sediakan soalan, kami akan jawab. Kita akan paparkan soalan. We will display your question on the screen. Okay, and we will try to answer uh, as as best as we can. If we cannot answer, then we say we we can answer the question. <laughs> so that's why we have uh, I have Dr. Azida here to to help answering the question. We have Dr. We have Rafida here. Uh, sounds yeah, like very familiar yeah. name, familiar face. We have one Mariam, Dr. Yam here. Uh, we have Dr. Lisa, Yami. we have Dr. Dr. Yani. Dr. Yani here, Dr. Sha, um, Dr. Okay, who else? Um, Professor Fong, thank you for joining from Sabah. Professor Fong, uh, Zarul Hazrin, Zarul Hazrin. Hi, uh -huh. Hi Dr. Najwadi. Azrina Ahmad Najwadi Maha Lechmi. Maha, my student. Oh, your student. Oh, I thought it's uh, Dr. Maha from, yeah. Dr. N. Okay, welcome. Uh, this is already three. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good afternoon. Selamat sejahtera, everyone. Uh, welcome to our Q&A. Q&A. Uh, online teaching and learning. Okay, um, so I have with me this afternoon the expert in educational technology, uh, Dr. Azida uh, Buziden. Uh, I'll switch the screen shortly. So welcome, Dr. Azida. Uh, thank you, Prof. <laughs> thank, you. thank you for joining me and thank you for sharing uh, uh, the responsibility this afternoon to answer the question. So our session this afternoon is basically uh, just one, basically to answer any question posted by our participant today. So I'm sure um, there'll be many questions for those who are just uh, embarking on the world of online teaching, online learning. Please feel free to post your question on, on the chat box. I will highlight uh, the question on the screen then we will try to answer the question uh, one by one so let's wait for while waiting for uh, let's give another a few more minutes uh, for other participants to join in and um, in the meantime uh, please uh, feel free to post your questions okay so once again, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Tio. Thank you for joining, Dr. Tio from IPPT. 
Dr. Azia tak ada gambar. Yeah, shortly because uh, I'm I'm switching to the PowerPoint now. So let's switch back to uh, scene number one here. So now uh, you should be able to see uh, Dr. Azidah there on the screen. Okay. So um, yeah. I'm here. I'm here, Theo. So Good please, you. please uh, post your questions. Uh, we can see the Dean also, Prof Narima, um, joining in. Okay. Dr. Wan Zuhaimi is also just joined. Wow, ini bahaya ni. Orang kementerian ada yeah. join sekali ni. Pengarah PKA <laughs> ada ni. Takut. Takut ni, takut. Takut. Hai, <laughs> Dr. Bakiah. Okay, Dr. Bakiah. Bakiah also, thank you for joining. Okay, shall we, um, okay, let me go through if we have any questions. Um, please ask questions and we try to answer your questions. Okay, let me go through uh, for USM. Okay, let's pick one question first, Dr. Azida, shall we? Okay. From, from Teh, can you see the question on the screen? Uh, not yet. Oh, not yet, yeah? Okay. Uh, because there's a lag, a lag uh, probably around 20 second. So, uh, the question from T, Dr. T, for USM, uh, we have to use WebEx. We have to use WebEx or we can use any online platform. Oh, okay. This one... Uh, Very easy to, to answer. Uh, <laughs> huh? Very easy to answer. Yeah, this one, uh, okay. Uh, WebEx is actually, uh, not to say our official uh, our official uh, official application to do to do online class but since we have the we have the license so we give to all our USM staff now by now everyone should be should have the license already but um, we we are also free uh, to use other um, applications such as zoom or Google meet or what else? Uh, Zoom, Google Meet, uh, um, yeah. Uh, Microsoft Teams. Yeah, Microsoft and, Teams. Microsoft yeah. Teams as well. Yes. Feel free to use those platform. Uh, we are not uh, limiting Webex to, to Webex only. Okay. Uh, but in terms of support for the time being, uh, PPKT only support Webex and CDAE, CDAE also support Webex. So if you have any technical questions. You can post the question to PPKT or also to CDAE, and we 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 should be able to to help out. But for Zoom, um, USM has a plan to buy or to subscribe to Zoom. But um, in the meantime, we are using WebEx. So that's a question from T. Uh, let's look at if we have other questions. Uh, okay, we have. Dr. Roshal, Rosh, Rosha, Rosha, Lisa, Lisa Ramli. Uh, I don't know where from where from. Is it UMP? Pasti. Dr. Rosha Lisa, where are you from? Okay, Dr. Rosh, Dr. Rosha Lisa, uh, question here. Uh, maybe you don't see. You have not. See, you you. Uh, maybe it's not on your screen yet. But let me read the question by Dr. Rosha Lisa. Any suggestion on how to do calculation-based assignments as online assessment for students? Any website website tools that may help the educators? Okay, I read the question again. Any suggestion on how to do calculation-based assignment as online assessment for students? Any website tools that may help the educators? Hmm, maybe this one I give a difficult question to Dr. Azida to answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, Dr. Roshah Liza, yeah? I think... Uh, from UMP, from UMP. UMP, yeah? Yeah, okay. that's why I, I, I noticed the name. Okay, so I think at the moment we don't have a very comprehensive uh, online assessment tools. Okay, we don't have any... Can you hear me, Prof? Yeah, 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 can. Carry on, carry on. All right. Go ahead. Okay. So, what I suggest you do is uh, you just give questions to students because uh, students are very creative. Now, so what happen, What will happen is you just give them 
a video, you just you can record your video anywhere. Just record, meaning that you can use your handphones and so on. You just record uh, when you do the calculation and then you upload somewhere, for example, in your e-learn or your, your LMS platform. Then what happened uh, uh, for the students, they do the calculation at home. All right, they do the calculation based on the video. You just give them questions. They also record what they are doing and pose it back to you. Meaning that you don't have to like uh, do a very uh, difficult or you, you don't have to use very difficult apps and so on. Just use it traditional, uh, traditionally, but you use the handphones and so on so that it won't be difficult for the students to record it as well. So for me, I would like to do like that. I always do like that because I think uh, uh, getting the students to explore and getting the lecturers to explore new apps is also quite hard for them. So just use the traditional way, use pen and uh, pen and paper and then you do the calculation and so on. And then you give the uh, assignment to the students. All right and then ask the student to do calculation and send the video back to you. Okay, well, um, yeah, this was actually um, for engineering, for mathematics. Yeah. Um, this could be um, a, a common question. Um, Calculation-based assignment as online assessment. Um, yeah, like what, uh, like what uh, Dr. Uh, Azida said it just now uh, that's only one option um, what other options are available um, any website tool yeah that may help yeah or calculation based uh, hmm. i have dr emma zul from usm here uh, hmm. she mentioned about using wacom tablet yeah yeah but it is will it will be quite a hassle for a first timer so jadi dia kata she also record her own calculation using screencast okay yeah maybe maybe there is one uh, option that we can explore but this uh, we 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 keep this question in mind um, and we will try to explore uh, if we find a good alternative uh, maybe we can suggest uh, i would like to invite the participant here also to give your own uh, suggestion here if uh, because we we here dr azida and me uh, we, we don't have the answer for everything uh, we, we try to answer the best we can but if yeah. you have your own uh, ideas and suggestion feel free to put uh, on our chat uh, there yeah okay um maybe i'll try to pick up another question um uh, yeah uh, Cik Zul, Cik, uh emma emma zol okay emma zol uh, this is what uh, dr azida uh mentioned just now last time i used wacom tablet but uh, to do calculation base but it's quite a hassle for the first timer i also record my own calculation using uh, screencast so that's uh, the experience uh, shared by dr emma from uh, gs from man from management score management okay we have one oh i must pick up this question dr azida because it's from our own dato farhan yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. seeing it as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dr. Farhan, kata, any tips on how we can use, uh, we can ensure inclusivity, uh, all students can follow the online learning fully. This is the key because MKN uses this as one of the requirements to allow online teaching and learning. Well, this is uh, the difficult part. Um, yes, the issue of inclusivity um, I don't think we can have uh, a simple solution for this because uh, when we do the online session like this, the first requirement would be to have the internet connection and uh, good internet connection. Then uh, we need to have a good uh, device, in, at least uh, a phone, a smartphone. So the, the device and also the internet connectivity. Then if the students using their phone, the issue is they if they are at home they have to use maybe their own data or maybe if they have uh, internet subscription uni5 and so on at home maybe that's not very very critical but if you are using their own data you know uh, that's probably 
some issue for them because uh, they have to pay for the data uh, and especially if we do video streaming like this it uses a lot of data and that could be um, the, the stumbling block or the issue for the students so there's to me and uh, there's no easy solution what about you uh, dr azida do you want to add yes. up to this yeah i agree with prakari because i think uh most of our students are back in their hometown at the moment mm -hmm. so it is quite hard for us to monitor how they have access to our lms our uh, learning materials and so on so i think um uh, the most that we can do is upload the materials, okay, in our e-learning platform, uh, in whatever, uh, whichever university, okay, and then uh, they have to access it when they come to back to university to make sure that they access the uh, materials in our LMS is quite hard at the moment because I don't think they have, uh, yeah, some of them will have access to the LMS. So recorded uh, videos is uh, is the most is the good the, the best way the best way for uh, us lecturers to do at the moment okay and live session is not advisable because um, you can do the live live uh, streaming class however you uh, the lecturers must uh, make sure that they record they record the session so that uh, the students who uh, has this uh, have this disadvantage uh, can access later. However, uh, if you know lecturers has the ability to edit the video, it is also advisable because you know when you record the session, there are a lot of you know lagging. You have a lot of uh, you know uh, sounds and uh, images that uh, you know when people. Uh, look at it. If you uploaded it directly, it will be um, like uh, this uh, a disturbance to the session as well. So uh, it is advisable for the lecturers to uh, edit the videos a little bit, you know, so that it won't be that long to be uploaded to be watched by the students in the LMS. Yeah, uh, I would like to add to that. I think uh, to address the issue of internet connectivity, which we still having problem, uh, even we using Uni5, uh, I think maybe the, the a better option is to have more of asynchronous, meaning that um, the video, we can uh, pre-record the video, uh, then we upload to the learning platform and the students can access it uh, at their own time, rather than using a lot of uh, live, uh, live uh, online class because it requires a lot of resources uh, in terms of the internet uh, uh, connectivity. So I think maybe we, we have to do less, less uh, live streaming, less live session, but more of so-called asynchronous where we record the video and we upload the content to the learning platform. Perhaps that would, be, that would uh, kind of uh, ease the burden to the, to, the, to, the, to the system, I think, yeah. Okay, um, let's, let's look at, uh, okay, we have uh, um, Unicorn Server Equity, all right. Um, yeah. Um, okay, I'll pick this question from Ife Dayo. If it are you ado, please, how are students' attendance adequately adequately monitored and assured for online teaching and learning? Students' attendance, okay. Uh, well, uh, before I, I let Dr. Azida to answer, um, to me, at this moment, let's not worry too much about the student attendance that's probably the least that we need to worry about uh, in fact in a face-to-face -face, uh, class i i don't believe in taking attendance because uh, to me they are adult learners they should take the responsibility of their own learning they should learn how to be responsible for their own learning so um, i think we need to put to give a lot of trust to our adult students not 
treating them like school children, um, empower them rather than control them. So to me, it's about empowering rather than controlling. Uh, but that's my personal opinion. Uh, but in the online system, of course, uh, we can uh, we, we we can find the the tool to get them to do that to give the attendance. But there's no way we can really ensure that they will be there sitting throughout the session. So to me, it's it's kind of a waste of time to really put our effort there. What about what was your opinion, Dr. Azida? Okay, so yes, I do agree with uh, Prof. Arif. Okay, because I think that uh, at the moment, uh, we don't really need to take attendance, okay? Uh, for this, uh, now, for now, actually, uh, during this uh, crisis of COVID-19, I think that we, we should be very flexible. We give time for the students to learn and so on. However, for the purpose of, you know, the semesters, throughout the semesters, not in the crisis, it's up to the lecturers. Uh, I think most of the lecturers are concerned because we can bar the student uh, from attending exams if they uh, do not come to the classes. So for me, because I'm a very uh, fond user of uh, LMS, uh, for example, our e-learn platform, so I would like to advise lecturers to use the attendance, uh, to take attendance using the e-learn platform because we can generate the... Um, uh, attendance uh, for the whole semester okay we can create the attendance for weekly and then when the students come to class they can just uh, scan the QR code that we uh, present uh, in our lecture hall or in our class and if let's say you are really concerned about taking attendance while doing class online you can also um, show the QR code from the e in your uh, online session. They can just uh, scan the QR code using their handphones as well, okay, and it will be recorded in the e -lit. Also, you can also uh, set the uh, attendance in your e and the student can actually tick in the e to make sure that uh, they attend the uh, session. So you can do that as well. So for me, uh, it is not compulsory at this moment, but if you are concerned about the attendance, you can do that as well. But, you know, if you are using Zoom, you are using uh, Microsoft Teams or WebEx, you can actually um, monitor the attendance from the faces that appear in your online sessions. So it won't be a problem unless you have so many students, then you have uh, to take the attendance uh, manually. Okay, that's my uh, idea. Okay, thank okay. you, Dr. Azida. So let's pick a look at another question here from Dr. Muhammad Hafizi Ahsan from UMS. Uh, okay, uh, Salam Prof. Karim and Dr. Azida. Can you share how we can hold students focus for a certain period of time as if we are doing group discussions with the students in the actual face-to-face? -face? Ah, this is all about... Um, uh, the attention span and about engagement. How do we hook? How do we hook the students, uh, engage them so that you know they focus throughout the session? Actually, I demonstrated this uh, yesterday in the uh, session on interactive learning activities. Uh, if you remember, if you join uh, Dr. Hafizis Malam uh, yesterday, did you join our session yesterday? Um, so yesterday I demonstrated how uh, I create an activity, uh, a debate, a debate, um, and I use a Mentimeter. So I, I, the, I give them the scenario, uh, a statement from uh, Tan Sri Muner, I think. And then based on that uh, statement, uh, we can ask the students to, we can group the students and this can be done before the session. So uh, let's say a few groups take the pros Cons, uh, pros uh, side, another group, a few more groups take the, the, the against uh, side. Then they can uh, give them like five minutes or ten minutes to discuss. And then uh, after that, uh, ask them to post like uh, uh, three points or five points uh, in their, you know, in using Mentimeter. We set up, we set up a Mentimeter and they can post a question there. So 
Um, there are many ways how we can design the learning activities to engage them. I share one book by Professor Curtis Bong yesterday. Uh, there is 100 plus uh, interactive activity that you can choose. So maybe uh, check out the book. And uh, maybe Dr. Azida, you want to add to that how we hold the attention of, of our students that, so that they don't fall asleep during the online okay. session. I think that uh, in an online session, the students will be able to uh, focus more compared to face-to-face -to -face. Uh, because uh, just, you know, don't give lectures uh, during the online session. Okay, make sure that you needs uh, uh, 15 minutes but you need to ask the students question give them chance to give their own opinion and let them interact together okay don't uh, don't think that the online session like this one is uh, one way okay because i think that most of the lecturers think that when we do webex when we do zoom and so on it is the only uh, uh, online lectures. You are do only doing online lectures. However, the online interaction, you are not doing lectures, but you are going to interact with your students. So, post questions, you know, ask the students to, for example, if you are using Zoom, let uh, the students chat, doing the live chat, like you are doing now in the YouTube live, okay, you ask questions, so let the student ask questions in the live chat. Okay, and then uh, ask other students to answer the question on behalf of you, meaning that, you know, you are going to let the student interact. You are not the experts. You are going to share with your students and your students will also share their opinion with you. So it will be a very interactive session. Uh, I think that uh, I have uh, conducted um, a session with almost 100 students. Per session, and I think that they will be more interactive during uh, this online session compared to if you are giving uh, giving um, lectures in the lecture hall. Okay, because they are excited to share their opinion because they know that you, they are behind a device, not directly talking to you. So I think uh, there will be no problem to engage your student, but make sure that you don't talk too much. Okay, you don't talk too much. That is important. <laughs> don't talk too much. Uh, remember uh, yesterday, uh, sorry to repeat this again, but uh, yeah, how not to bore your students uh, online. Uh, my idea is to divide into five segments. We start with short activity, then we have a short lecture, then we have another activity, then we continue with short lecture, then finally we have some form of assessment, uh, reflection, and also closure. So I think the, the, the key here is not, as Dr. Azida said, don't give, don't talk too much, don't give lecture for the entire uh, online session because it's going to be very boring. We need to have maybe, uh, you know, a short game, then some activities, so we can have like an alternate kind of thing uh, mixed together. Uh, just like we mix ingredients in the food to make it nice, um, then that's how we design our uh, online uh, session. And, um, and if you remember, when we design the learning activities, we should uh, remember the three key points here, the learning activities that would engage, that would interact, and that something that the students have to do uh, in the form of action that they have to take. Uh, so that's basically uh, the, uh, some of the things that we can do in order to in order to uh, engage the students and they don't fall asleep, okay? Okay, let's pick up another uh, questions. Um, okay, uh, Dr. Sharifa Rosaina here. Dr. Sharifa, uh, just to share my experience, I use Zoom meeting and share screen, screen Padlet, Padlet screen where after students have completed their assignment or calculation or activities, they immediately upload their work. Uh -huh. That's, I think, the answer to Dr. 
Rosh Rosh Hamaliza just now uh, from UMP. So yeah, that's probably um, partly answer the question from Dr. Samaliza. Okay, um, Dr. Rosha, I think Dr. Rosha, right? We have from uh, Dr. Mariam. Let's pick up the question from Dr. Marian. Mariam. I've given quiz before that requires math equation. The student wrote on paper and took picture and upload in Elan. Ah, uh, that's again to answer mm. the question from Dr. Rosha. Uh, <laughs> still, uh, we we still can use the traditional pen and paper. Uh, we should not uh, forget about uh, those things. We can use in combination with technology with high tech kind of thing. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, let's let's look at what Doctor Wan uh, said here. Uh, from the authority here. Dr. Wan kata, asynchronous learning at this moment will be a better way to do online. Yeah, that's why, that's what I, we, we also uh, are suggesting maybe we need to do more asynchronous, meaning that we create content, we create a video, we record the video and then upload to our learning platform and then we, we have the schedule where the students can access the content on a timely uh, basis. Yeah, synchronous, asynchronous is perhaps the way to go for the time being. Um, okay, okay. Uh, let's pick up from. Hi, that is me. Waalaikumsalam. <laughs> Cik Zul, Cik Zul from Penerbit USM here. Just a qualitative uh, observation. My interaction with academics indicate uh, only about 15 to 20 percent are poised and technically well versed to jump into the digital bandwagon. Your take? <laughs> Maybe I will give Dr. Azida to to give her uh, view here. But uh, I truly, totally agree with this statement. That figure is probably quite uh, quite true. <laughs> What about you, uh, Dr. Azida, you want to say something on this? Okay. Yeah. All right. Just briefly, yes, I do agree. I do agree totally with you uh, that uh, 15 to 20% only of our lecturers, academic staff are well-versed actually into the digital learning. Okay. However, uh, uh, yeah, uh, during this time, I think that we found that uh, now they are going... Um, to be, they are learning, okay, most of them are learning to adopt and adapt the online teaching and learning. So, uh, this is the good time actually for us uh, to help the, the academics to learn and to uh, adopt the online teaching and learning. I know that, you know, uh, from my own experience uh, in our e-learn at USM, we can see that uh, USM, yeah, I'm looking at USM, our uh, e-learning platform only less than 30% of our lecturers, staff, academic staff is using e-learn at USM. Oh, no. Okay, and staff, yeah, 30%. Pecah rahsia. Okay, <laughs> so meaning that we have less lecturers that adopt a thing e-learn at USM, uh, but uh, uh, throughout this uh, uh, last week and this week, we found that you know it uh, went up uh, drastically. Even our our uh, e-learn platform cannot uh, manage to take all the lecturers to, you know, but I think um, they are going to it. Okay, they are going to it. And now uh, most of them know that it is important for them to embark in the online platform. So we don't see that, uh, you know, they are, they are late comers for the e-learn as one of uh, our problem. It is not a problem. It is uh, we we can always support them in terms of adopting teaching and learning online teaching and learning to to use uh, online tools and so on. It takes time, but I think uh, now is the time for us to uh, get all the academics to be with us in online teaching and learning. Yeah. So don't worry yeah. about that. I, I think, think. Uh, this is a great opportunity. Great opportunity. Yeah for our staff now to embark on a new journey, a new experience uh, on uh, 
the world of online education. I always uh, believe that it's not an option anymore. It's no longer an option. Uh, it's a must, and we need to leverage leverage the technology uh, so that we can use them uh, in an impactful way. Especially when we have a situation like this. Imagine if in the last few years, all our staff, I mean not only USM and other universities, have fully embraced technology, fully embraced e-learning, fully embraced online, fully embraced blended learning. We won't have this kind of kelam uh, kabut and havoc and you know, uh, the readiness is already there. But it's okay. I think uh, there's always, uh, there's never too late to start, uh, better late than never. So this is a, a, a great opportunity for us to moving forward. I think this is what we need to do. Okay, um, I want to pick um, just a quick comment by Prof. Hazman here. Um, he said that your response on inclusivity challenges underscores JPT concern about equity and the total temporary cease order. Yeah, very true. Uh, we still have the issue of digital divide. But uh, this digital divide issue um, is a continuing uh, kind of issue. Uh, even in US, the total internet penetration is still less than 80%. Uh, I think 90%. What, uh, what's more? In, in Malaysia, it's probably around 70 to 8, 75% maybe. So let's see how we can uh, um, address this issue. Uh, from Dr. Allah Bash, uh, Dr. Abbas here, um, editing video is not easy. Dr. Azida, I never, yes. I have never done it before. Well, it's okay. Uh, there's always a first time, right? <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I yeah. feel like editing video too. Yeah, <laughs> but I try, I try. Yeah, but this this morning we talk about creating content, and I have shared uh, uh, one online course. Uh, rapid rapid video uh, creation and there's another module on DIY instructional video with that two courses uh, if you follow through inshallah you uh, give it a try uh, use a simple application like Loom screencast automatic Panopto we're going to hopefully we're going to have Panopto license uh, very soon so it, it's not that difficult. Uh, you just need some practice. After after a few times practice, uh, you can produce content on the fly. That's the key word. The, we need, uh, you know, there will come a time where everyone can create content, can create video on the fly, essentially, literally on the fly. <laughs> okay. Um, um, there is a question on Prof. How yeah. much time did you spend on creating and editing video? Yeah. The last from, uh, comment yeah. down. From, from where? Yeah. From who? Uh, there is no name, but nine three six eight. Uh, so I don't know who is this. Okay. Oh, uh, but long. yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, how long it take for? How long it take to create a video, right? Yeah, creating and editing video. So that question is directed to who? <laughs> uh, oh yeah, yeah. Prof. I, I, I saw the, I, I see the question. Uh, how much time did you spend on creating and editing video? Wow, I actually never time uh, the video. But uh, I think when you reach a level of uh, proficiency, not expert, uh, I don't want to say I'm expert, uh, level of profession, proficiency in a certain skill, let's say creating a video using Loom, uh, Sometimes I create Loom on the fly, really. If I want to communicate something or create a quick video. Uh, some, Sometimes some people ask questions through email and I, I'm too lazy to type the answer. So I just click Loom on my Chrome browser. Then I just explain the thing and get the link and share through the email. So uh, in that sense, sometimes it just take a few minutes. A few minutes, really. Uh, but if you want to create a proper a proper video content based on your PowerPoint, for example, for the lecture, then you need to prepare the PowerPoint. And assuming your PowerPoint is ready to record it using Loom or using Screencast-O-Matic or using Panepto, uh, you have a script, maybe you want to spend some time to write a script. 
but I have never actually done any script, so I just do it on, you know, just uh, wing it. Um, that probably will take uh, about hmm, 20 minutes, half an hour, sometimes up to one hour. Um, yeah, uh, about that. What about you, Dr. Azizah? Yeah, yeah I, I think, you know, uh, for a proper uh, editing uh, and um, creating videos will take uh, a long time. Okay, I, I don't do a very proper uh, videos for my students, actually. You know, sometimes because uh, when I have time, I do do a very fast, quick um, video for my students to be uploaded in the LMS. Okay, it took, I take a, around 15 to 20 minutes. You know, sometimes on the uh, kitchen table, just do... A, because we have the... Uh, we have the... PowerPoint ready, you know, from our last master's course and so on. So just uh, look for the PowerPoint. Use screen. I, I like screencast automatic so much. So I just use screencast automatic. I do some explanation from the screencast automatic and then uh, share uh, the video to my students. So it won't take that long. But if, uh, but please, you know, make sure that you are not too particular about, you know, your language and so on, because I think that that will be a very proper and it will make you take take time to do the video. Uh, for quick videos, it will be, for me, 15 to 30 minutes, but it is only for my students. Lah. If you want to put it in YouTube and so on, then you must do a proper video. Okay, but yeah, uh, it, it will go through later on, you know, meaning that uh, later on you will be able to do the editing, creating uh, properly. But for the first timers, I think you should go slow. But yeah, try with yeah. your students. Yeah. Your student will see you, you know, like whatever you are doing in the lecture hall. So don't worry too much. I think uh, it's very important uh, to enjoy the process of creating the content. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you will feel, uh, you know, uh, to kind of burdensome to, to create the content. Um, we have a uh, from Ron here. <laughs> uh, I don't know whether it's a real name. Pro Prof. Pro Prof is actually uh, easy for for easy quick quiz. Yeah, Pro Prof is another application we can use to create uh, learning activities. Um, there's a free version. Uh, there's also the paid version, right? Does it? Pro Prof. Yes. Yes. Yeah, but it's quite good. I think it's quite good. Uh, I I've used, I have used it a few times. Yeah, I think for beginners, Pro Prof is good. It's good, yeah? Meaning that it's easy to use, you know, very, uh, yeah, very easy for uh, new uh, people who are embarking into e-learn and so on. It, it will be very easy. Uh, Yasmin has a question here. I think Dr. Yasmin from Physic, um, or from PPIP. Uh, what about using, is it from PPIP or from Physic, Dr. Azida? No, I can't see that. Uh, uh, which one? Dr. Yasmin or Uh Anyway, uh, the question I is, what uh, about... I think it is from physics. Uh, what about using Telegram in online teaching? Yeah. What about using Telegram? Telegram in online teaching. Uh, yes, or you're all saying like using WhatsApp. Uh, I, I'm, I don't use Telegram. Uh, I use actually WhatsApp. Uh, usually i create a group uh, for the students uh, and whatsapp is the quick quick and fast way of communicating something for example let's say as part of my flip classroom uh, strategy in fact i wrote i wrote about it in my blog article uh, check it out so for example when i post a, a socrative uh, when i open a socrative quiz uh, a few days before the class or maybe the class is two days uh, in, in two days time so I create a Socrative quiz then I open it make it active then I will send a whatsapp with the link uh, we, uh, send a whatsapp telling the student okay I have opened the Socrative uh, now it's active uh, then I will open until 12 a.m. Uh, the night before the class so then the students uh, will be notified and they can start doing it. Uh, so the same thing like Telegram, if you are using Telegram, uh, the same way. So uh, I do use Telegram, uh, sorry, uh, WhatsApp a lot uh, for a quick communication with the students. Dr. Azida? 
Yes. Yeah, I think uh, uh, the let me just uh, highlight the disadvantage of using Telegram or WhatsApp because you can disseminate information for both, meaning that you can uh, give information, instruction in WhatsApp or Telegram and, and for a Telegram, you can share documents and so on. However, it is very hard for you to retrieve back the old conversation with your students. If let's say you have so many students and they ask questions and so on, you know, you have to browse back uh, to the older conversation for you to interact with your students. So they might get lost, you know, uh, uh, during the conversation. Maybe if you have so many questions from the students and uh, some students, they are late into the conversation, they have to browse through all the um, conversation to be able to get the information. So that's why uh, it, is, it can be only uh, for course uh, dissemination, delivery of uh, materials and so on. But for interaction, it will be quite hard for the students. So that's why uh, it is more advisable for you to use Padlet, use the LMS forum and so on, compared to WhatsApp and Telegram. That is what uh, I do, meaning that, you know, because I found that students often got, get lost when we use WhatsApp and Telegram. Yeah, um, okay, we have Dr. Noriz, Norliza, I think, Dr. Noriza Hushairi from UUM here. Um, I think Ed Puzzle is quick and easy to edit and insert quiz. Save time, take anything on YouTube, for example, and curate it. Uh, do you agree? Yes, uh, Ed Puzzle, I love Ed Puzzle. Um, Ed Puzzle is actually a replication where you can actually insert uh, quiz. So this is how we can make the video uh, interactive. Yesterday, I don't have time to mention about Ed Puzzle, but it's a very good application to uh, embed. It's, uh, it's embedding the quiz uh, at different point, at different interval in the video. So it's, very, it's actually a very good way to engage the student with the video content rather than asking them to watch the video, then um, do the activity later. They can actually watch the video while answering the the question. So it's an active, active engagement with the content uh, because they need to answer before they can move on to the next uh, you know segment in the video. Um, but when you say curation, uh, uh, puzzle is not really for curation okay. purpose. Uh, what is uh, Dr. Azidah? Apa yang nama tu? The the application where you can put the YouTube, then you can put the uh, all the different learning resources. As a sequence, so. Uh, I use Scoopy. Scoop. I use Scoopy. Scoopy for curation. Oh, Scoopy, but Scoopy has yeah. a limitation because um, yeah. No, um, that's one application where you can uh, actually arrange. Okay, uh, you can put YouTube, then you can put a quiz, then you can put uh, your PowerPoint in in sequence. Uh, uh, Apa okay. Was it the blank space one? Yeah, uh, blank. Blend space, but yeah, now it is already changed. Blend space, blend space. Yeah, blend space. Yeah, that's blend but space. But the name now is already changed. I can't remember. I thought blend space is the new name. Uh, no, no. Blend space was the, the previous name. Now they changed it into... Yeah, uh, I have been using yeah. it for a long time. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, Dr. Sharifah kata, um, yeah, me too, especially when students can share their slide to discuss etc interesting to see how they engage so if you want to make sure students are engaged with your video or the video you want them to watch uh, check out head puzzle it's very good to embed the question yeah for the video okay now the name is test blend speed tes test.com tes right yeah uh, test. Test, test test blend space okay we have All a right. question from elmi from elmi uh, Assalamualaikum, Assalam. How we implement, how we can implement online teaching and learning for experimental work in labor in the laboratories, so, <laughs> lab, a lab or studio is always um, mm, there's no easy uh, way doing it online unless you can do do like a virtual lab, but still. Uh, we cannot really replicate or replicate the same uh, experience in the lab because lab is about hands-on. 
the students have to try it out in the lab and you know uh, see the the result of the experiment and and so on so lab or studio is something to me not yet ready uh, unless you can uh, uh, anyone here can can suggest or do, 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 how how do you think a lab can be how yeah. do we do online for lab <laughs> yeah i i think it is uh, quite hard to do online class for lab uh, lab uh, but however you know uh, you can actually uh, record what you are doing in the lab and uh, upload it for your students to view but to do experiments i don't think you know you need the students to be there with you uh, to do the experiment together with you but um for the uh, for flip learning for their flip learning i think you can record the session and then upload so that they will uh, know what to do later on yeah because you know uh, for example if they are going to do uh, answer question in exam of the procedures in the lab or whatever you know uh, the video is very important the video uh, that you do it you as academic staff as a lecturer do it for your student is uh, much more preferable by the students compared to if you take other people's uh, video to be used in your classroom because i think the sense of uh, learning from their lecturers is quite important because they can they will be able to search for content in youtube but the sense of belonging to the lecturers that produce the uh, video is very important for the students that uh, so that they will know that you know when we learn we need to know who we are learning are from so when you do the video by yourself you know the sense of belonging for the students is much more and they, they, they know that they are learning from their own teacher their own lecturers so for me a customized video from the lecturers is very important Okay, this one from uh, Dr. Rosmi Wati. It looks weird at the beginning for both parties, lecturers and students, but as proverb says, Allah bisa tegal biasa, so it yeah. will become normal okay. to everyone. Yeah, um, this is new things for many of us. Uh, even, uh, you know, like Dr. Azida and myself, uh, we are quite um, familiar with online, but still, um, sometimes we also... Um, at times, we are also struggling to create content and so on because uh, um, it's not always easy. But um, over time, I think we can we can do it uh, easier and easier and faster and faster. Uh, okay, um, um, Zoom. Okay, uh, so Alan, about Zoom. <laughs> You mentioned about Zoom. Are we going to have Zoom subscribe soon or we continue <laughs> with WebEx? Okay. Uh, well, let's wait. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we will get, uh, we will subscribe to WebEx. Um, still, the university is looking at the course and yeah, basically it's the implication of course, but just uh, pray doa that we will get zoom also subscribe together with webex then we have microsoft team so at least we have three or four options for our lecturers to go online uh, doing live uh, session so there's no more excuses that our lecturers can give now um let's see from dr ismi uh, that was just a comment uh, dr azida uh, yeah. okay yeah. dr ismi i believe that we have to operate via online and offline to deliver teaching and learning to make sure our students can still access us as educators wired and wireless technology will save for the day yeah that's right um agree yam dr yam dr mariam say zoom or loom <laughs> zoom or loom zoom is actually for live webinar or live online session like we are what we are having now but um, what, oh, sorry. What uh, what we are doing now actually is uh, live broadcast. Zoom is for live uh, live broadcast to YouTube or Facebook, but with synchronous Zoom synchronous learning, synchronous online session. Yeah, synchronous online session. Loom is for recording recording the video. 
uh, for asynchronous meaning that we record the video then we can put on our learning platform the student can access later it doesn't have to be in real time okay so um, uh, Mahalechmi Mahalechmi thanks for the suggestion I never heard about Loom okay you never heard now you hear Loom now uh, you can try you can try and don't forget to get the free pro version using yeah. USM email or using your university's email grab it while you can because uh, Loom is so simple to use no brainer almost no brainer and but you can good produce good uh, video uh, recording uh, for your PowerPoint and so on yeah Loom um, oh Dr. Yasmin Mama Yusuf is from UPNM okay all right uh, uh, Dr. Kamimi kindly discuss about the pedagogy behind the selected use tool okay you Tools too. I am sure it will make you learn your learning experience session more meaningful. Okay. Um, is there a requirement for? Yeah. Uh, Dr. Yani said Loom to record Zoom similar to WebEx exactly. Uh, Dr. Kamimi is here. Fruitful discussion. Thank you, Prof. Fong. H five P is great tool to create. Okay, Prof. Fong say. H five P. What is H five P? Okay, let me explain H5P. Ah, okay, please. Okay, H, uh, H5P is similar, quite similar to uh, Add Puzzle just now. Ah, uh, okay. But it is okay. as, uh, a, a plugin in LMS, Moodle, in Moodle especially. So for uh, UAs, okay, pri uh, oh, public, public universities public who are public using public. Moodle, mm -hmm. they can use F5P for interactive content. Oh. The purpose is quite similar to App Puzzle. I think you have seen it in my LMS uh, uh, when I did the using e-learn effectively, Prof. Okay. Meaning that, you know, you can upload a video, mm -hmm. the own video to the LMS, and then you can card it uh, into sections where you can put quizzes, you can put uh, questions, you can summarize, and so on using using the H5P. It is quite interactive and my students, they like it so much. So I put uh, F5P uh, in my uh, teaching and learning so that my students will be able to see. They, you know, we can make sure that they are using the, um, they are uh, learning the content, they are watching the video and doing the quiz as well at the same time. So it is H5P in Moodle. It is a plugin in Moodle. Oh, it's a plugin. It's a plugin in, in Moodle. So if you are not using Moodle, if you are using, let's say, uh, Blackboard and so on, uh, you cannot use H H five P. I'm not sure about Blackboard because you know it is uh, because uh, the H H five P is a plugin. Uh, it is also uh, can be done outside uh, Moodle. Okay, meaning that it is, it can be a totally uh, uh, standalone website. Uh, meaning that you can do it in h5p.com, the content, and then you might be able to upload it in your Blackboard uh, as well. But for Moodle, it is a plugin. Okay. Uh, Pro Hasman here, uh, he said that we should also hear from our students um, um, on the use of all these tools. What's their take? We often speak for them. We will enrich the process by getting it from them. So meaning that uh, we get the uh, feedback from the students whether uh, you know whether the things that we create for them are useful for them, and the tools we use uh, for our for the interaction and so on. So uh, we also empower the students to give their opinion, their feedback, so that the learning process, because student-centered learning is also about empowering the students, right? I, I agree with Prof. Hasman. Uh, anything to add, uh, Dr. Azida, on this one? Uh, basically, okay. we get the so, students involved, basically, right? All right. So, I, I do agree. Uh, I, I think uh, some of my students are online now. Uh, okay, Farah, are you here, Farah? Can you uh, give some uh, comment uh, in the comment chat room? Uh, because, you know, you are one of the students who has been... Uh, 
who has been uh, in my class and I've been using these tools uh, so much. Okay, can you just give some comment uh, in the YouTube live so that you uh, people will know from the uh, students' point of view on how uh, how uh, the tools can be used and how effective they, the 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 uh, tools uh, that I use uh, in our class because I use a lot of tools in my class so that because I'm teaching ICT in education so most of my uh, students are. Uh, teachers who are not into technology and I have to embark them into the technology because they are going to use it in schools. So uh, from my students' feedback, you know, they, they told me that they learned a lot and they like it so much because it is very interactive. My sessions are always interactive and I always introduce them to the, um, to the new tools. And I also ask them to explore new tools so that I can learn from them. Because, you know, I haven't got time to explore so much in my classroom because, and, you know, I have so many things to do. So I learn from my students. They are digital natives. Okay, they are digital natives and they learn a lot of tools and they can teach us to learn new tools. So it is not about we exploring the tools. It is about the students explore the tools so that they can learn and we share together. So I think uh, students, they like it. They like us to explore the tools as well, to use the tools, and they can help us to um, uh, learn new tools. Okay, it is not only us to learn new things. Okay. Our students uh, also uh, like Farah, please, please share your thought. Uh, then I will uh, display your your feedback on the screen. Um, yeah, Yani, Dr. Yani here say Panopto allow video to be downloaded like looms. Exactly, yes. After the video is uh, rendered, you can actually download it from your account to your computer. And they allow us to download in several formats. I think on, in two or three uh, different formats. Or you can also get the link, the embed link, uh, then embed it in your uh, course. Yeah, yeah about the... Uh, getting the students also to participate. Dr. Noriza Koshari here, she said that my students' feedback so far, they were very keen and eager. Each time, um, each time uh, I told them that the, that online class via Zoom will be scheduled. So yeah, I think most students will uh, be excited. Um, and sometimes they yeah. share some tools that we, we also not aware. <laughs> the existence of the tool. So I learned a lot also from my students. Okay, um, there's a, one uh, from Azam, Muhammad here, to Azam, regarding the lab. So this is the issue of lab. It is possible to create electronic simulation process as an online learning. It can be interactive like playing game online, can engage video games designer in the online trainers. Well, uh, for some subject, I think some topics probably we can do simulation, but uh, for, for other type of labs, maybe not really possible or the experience will be uh, different, okay? Um, so, let's see whether I can pick up. Uh, yeah, uh, we have Dr. Rosha Liza here from UMP. Uh, she has used, she has experience using H5P in Moodle, but error came out. So now we, we don't know, uh, we don't know where to seek help. Okay, <laughs> I, I think Dr. Shari, uh, Roshaliza, you can ask your IT person, you can ask your IT person to install the H5P in, as plugin in the Moodle. So you don't have to upload, it is there in the e -learn. When you click on activity, there there will be interactive content. Then you just click and you can upload the video immediately. So meaning that don't use it outside Moodle, but use it, uh, ask your IT person to install it as plugin in uh, your Moodle. Kiman said, uh, Chua Kiman said, uh, it is integrated. I think the H5P is integrated to Blackboard, Canvas, etc. Oh, okay. So not only Moodle. Uh, it's also integrated, uh, available as a plugin for this other platform uh, as well. Thank you, Kiman. Yeah. 
according to Zainal uh, Abidin, uh, H5P. Zainal, UTHM. Yeah, yeah H5P Interactive Tool currently free. Currently free. Uh, currently free. Hopefully, it will remain free forever. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm not aware about this H5P. Yeah, uh, Zainal also say Loom Pro. Loom Pro is now free permanently to educators and students. Yeah, that's very good news. Uh, that's a blessing in disguise in COVID-19. Uh, there are many uh, applications now provide, uh, uh, is uh, available for free for uh, forever, some actually for a short time. So um, that's a good thing for us. All right. Um, from Chin here, a question about Panopto. I attended your Panopto session last Monday for content creation. Do you think just use either Loom or Panopto is sufficient? Um, for with, with Panopto, actually, um, it, the students can have control on uh, on the on the content on the video content. They can actually uh, go to any slide. Uh, can they can jump to any slide uh, they want um, because uh, it's quite interactive in the sense that uh, they can have control there. But with uh, Loom, basically everything is recorded, so they don't have any control. They they just watch the video. But of course, they can jump also if. Uh, if you have your video on YouTube, they can jump from point to point as well. So, uh, to me, uh, you can use either one uh, based on your preference. Um, there's no, uh, actually, one is better than the other. Both are good and serve a different purpose. Um, yeah, let's see with Progari. Yeah, uh, Aizat. Is this Aizat from engineering? Not sure. Uh, Aizat say, um, as a newbie for online teaching, what is the preferred free? The preferred free or USM license software for lecture? Is it WebEx? Quiz, test, is it Edpuzzle? Tutorial, discussion based? software based assignment so for lecture usm license or free license uh, lecture to record as uh, we mentioned just now you can use loom you can use uh, uh, panopto you can use screencast yeah mm. for quiz quiz i uh, i love uh, my socrative <laughs> uh, you can also use the quiz uh, feature in Moodle. You can use uh, Google. I like Form. Quizlet. Hmm? I like Quizlet. Quizlet. Yeah. Yeah, because you can uh, embed it in your uh, Moodle or LMS. You can also use it in your live classroom. So uh, for me, what I did was I just put the same question that I'm going to do the interactive quiz in the classroom. The same question I put in my LMS before class so that they can practice. They can uh, know what uh, is the topics that is going to be discussed in the, cl in the class. And then the same question will be uh, uh, applied during the classroom session interactive session so you know they can uh, practice beforehand before they go to class so i love i love uh, quizlet actually tutorial what about tutorial uh, discussion based tutorial or discussion based software uh, hmm. okay for tutorial I, I think padlet is the best at the moment meaning padlet. that you you can put question you can do discussion on padlet however uh, for for newbie it is only three uh, padlets that you can use at the moment for free uh, license okay but um, discussion yeah more towards padlet and then uh, or forum in your elet but i like to put the padlet i like to embed the padlet in the elet so that the students will be able to discuss they will be able to submit their uh, video their infographics 
their content in the Padlet and we will be able to see it in the e-learn. So we just open the e-learn and we are able to uh, see what our students do in the Padlet. So embedding Padlet in e-learn uh, is my preferred way uh, to discuss with the students. What about the last one, software-based uh, assessment? Software-based assignment. assessment. Assessment, um, right? Yeah, software-based assessment. Assignment. Uh, assignment, bro. Uh, assignment. Oh, assignment. Okay. Software-based assignment, yeah. What is the meaning of software-based assignment? Uh, um, I'm not sure about that. Um, anyone can help us? Yeah, software-based uh, assignment. Uh, yeah, um... Maybe, Aizat, you want to cl clarify? Uh, what do you mean, yeah? What do you mean by software-based assignment? Okay, we have uh, from Dr. Mimi here. Our Dr. Mimi. <laughs> Kindly discuss about the pedagogy behind the selected use tools too. I'm sure it will make your learning experience session more meaningful, pedagogically articulated. Uh, anything pedagogy, I will pass to the expert. <laughs> Dr. Azida. Okay. So this actually Mimi just just uh, just a comment from Dr. Mimi. So of course, uh, before before Dr. Azida uh, say more, to me um, as a non-educationist uh, like myself, I I also believe that anything we do, whether we are using technology or using uh, using any tool or any uh, approach, uh, we need to understand the underlying. Uh, pedagogical principles uh, that uh, basically um, the, the, the for the basis of, of that. So of course, uh, I think this is where we need uh, more kind of exposure, training, education for our lecturers so that uh, it's pedagogically sound and pedagogically driven rather than using the tool blindly and not knowing uh, what are the pedagog pedagogical basis uh, of it? Uh, I think you are right, Dr. Mimi. I agree totally. Yeah, Dr. Azida, betul kan? Yeah, yeah. I really, uh, I agree with uh, Prakarim, yeah. meaning that um, uh, actually um, when we uh, use certain uh, tools, it is not about the tools itself. It is about uh, how the students learn uh, during the process. So actually for me, uh, the tools, uh, if being used uh, to cater the need of our student, it will be good uh, for our students' learning. However, if you are using the tools because it is, a, it is a tools that available for you to use and you don't think about the pedagogy uh, behind using the tools, then it is not, uh, you, uh, you know, you better just go and do it offline. Uh, for example, yeah, if you are using Padlet, okay, Padlet, I have been using Padlet for like six, five or six years, I think, and I still think it is a good way for me to use, it is a good platform for me to share with my, my students because I can see the progress of my students, I can interact with my students, you know, and the students, uh, they also like it because they can also see uh, their, uh, their peers Okay, what are other students are doing? So meaning that they are learning from their peers, they are learning by themselves, self-learning from uh, the, their friends. So it is not the tools itself. Padlets are there to be used, but how you are using it according to the need of the students and the content of what you are delivering to your students. So I think the pedagogy behind it is much more important than the tools itself. Yeah, Dr. Khairul here, Khairul Khairo Anwar, say uh, engineering, we need to follow the Board of Engineers regulation for PNP. If we switch to online, maybe we have an issue. Yeah, this is something and uh, we need to sort out. Uh, the Board of Engineers uh, also need to move with time. Uh, I think we need to somehow convince them that there are certain subjects, especially the theory base. The knowledge base or the theory base can be done online. But uh, without compromising quality, so this is where we need to 
convince the board of engineers. Same thing, same goes for health um, profession and, and so on. So it takes, it will take time, I think, before we reach to that level. Um, okay, uh, I want to pick up, um, where is it just now? I saw a question. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kiman actually uh, mentioned about the issue of lab. Uh, how do we do lab online? So he said, uh, Praxi lab. Praxi labs. Uh, I don't know whether it's a correct spelling or wrong spelling there, but Praxi labs has virtual labs for basic skills in handling experimental tools. So this is just more information for those who want to explore uh, how to do virtual lab, uh, something called Plexi Lab. Uh, I'm not aware of this. Um, yeah, Nor Baiduri here so, um, say something about put the items to teach in small chunks to avoid long video. Yes, we, we, yes, we, yes. You know, uh, we agree totally. Uh, micro learning, uh, sometimes they call it chunking the content into small uh, video rather than a long video. Um, okay. Um, hmm, okay. Um, do we miss any, any questions? Uh, there's another question about the lab. I think there's a lot of concern about lab because uh, uh, I understand um, we need to figure out something about the lab. So uh, Dr. Muhammad Nasiruddin here, he said, what do you think about having remote lab where students can access remotely? Would you share with us your experience in conducting any lab session remotely? For example, IMK421. Ah, you know about the course I'm, conduct, I'm, I'm teaching, yeah? I'm no longer teaching this course now. Uh, no, uh, I have no experience. I that, bro. <laughs> um, I have no experience uh, conducting remote lab. Uh, this is something, uh, I think something we really need, really need to explore the option given the situation of COVID-19. Uh, we, we perhaps need to put our head together now. How do we conduct lab session? But currently there's no simple answers uh, for that. So uh, we don't have definite answers for this. Eh? Um, yeah, Nolida here. How long should a video be so as not to bore students? Of course, as a general rule of thumb, uh, you know, as short as possible. We are talking about three minutes to five minutes uh, chunk of video. Uh, even three minutes nowadays probably would be too long, but uh, yeah. that's about the range. If you, if you see YouTube, I... I have now about 300 plus videos on my YouTube channel. Uh, some as long as one hour, uh, 40 minutes, some as short as like five minutes. When I look at the data, the analytics, the average time for all these 300 plus videos, uh, people watch the video is around three minutes, believe it or not. <laughs> so uh, that's the average. So try, try not to make it too long. Yeah, Dr. Noriza it can be between five to seven minutes. The first seven seconds is very important to capture the attention, to captivate the attention of our, of our students. Um, yeah. Um, okay, let me scroll down. Well, maybe there is a new, uh, who's the name? The, Farah, your, your student, Dr. Yeah, yeah, but Farah uh, A.A.N. Do you see her respond here? Or maybe she's not here? Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, Farah, A-N-N, is it? Ah, uh, yes. Ah, okay, let's see whether... Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, that's on the screen. Uh, it's coming up soon. Uh, there's a delay. So, thank you for sharing, Prof and Dr. Azida. As a student, I would like to share my experience. I think Zoom and Quizlet are interesting and easy to use for newbie. Both are interactive and more uh, practical. Can you see Farah's uh, response? Yes. Yeah. yeah. On the screen now. So it's about 20 second uh, lag. 20 second late. Uh, Dr. Akmal JR here. Any tools to make it assessment for, to make assessment, uh, to, to create assessment for engineering student? Or just use own creative shoot live lecture? <laughs> 
uh, assessment for engineering students. Uh, this one uh, still the area that we have not yet explored uh, very much. Yeah. So why not people from engineering, from science, uh, we explore together? Yeah. What are the different tools uh, available now that we know we need to have this more and more uh, for sciences, for engineering? I think the area on assessment, online assessment, I think we need to put our head together here. Uh, how to, you know, to, to make it uh, easy for, yeah, uh, Dr. Sharifa. Um, although, although we use online learning, le lesson outcomes should clearly be explained to the students. And also assessment. Assessment can be in the form of summative or formative. Okay. Not surprising this uh, statement coming from Dr. Sharifa. Yeah. Uh, the expert in uh, assessment. Yes, of course. Um, despite whatever that we do online, uh, whether it's interactive or, uh, or non interactive, synchronous, asynchronous, or whatnot, um, at the end of the day, uh, we should not forget the constructive alignment, the aligning, uh, the alignment to the learning outcomes. Everything has to be taken into consideration. Um, yeah, Praxi Labs just now, Kiman said the actual, uh, he misspelled just now, Praxi Labs. Praxi Labs. Praxi Labs. Yeah. Um, okay. Mm. I think we... I have one more student yeah. here. Okay. Nurul, Nurul said uh, really had the most enjoy enjoyable class via Zoom last time with Dr. Azida. So I've been using okay. uh, Zoom in my classes. So Nurul said, uh, she was really she enjoyed it so much i think most of my students they like it so much okay good okay we have question from dr fateha uh, thank you for joining dr fateha <laughs> this morning also someone asked me this question i think dr uh forgot dr najwadi i think asked me this question uh, najwadi are you still there may i know may i ask how can we paste the sm logo on the top right hand corner of the video that's being cast now uh, it depends on the type of uh, streaming application that you are using uh, in my case uh, i'm using something called overlays yeah overlays yeah overlays so watch watch the logo i can make it disappear i can make it appear so this is what we call overlay. I can move the logo around. I put it on Dr. Azida's face here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so that is called overlay. Um, I'm using I'm using Ecam Live. Uh, let me show you the application, Ecam Live. So what you see on the screen now, this is also another another overlay. It's just an image, a screen capture, a screen. Uh, screenshot so um, so I'm using ecamm live so in in ecamm live I can create scenes and I can create overlay so uh, I can make it I can make the overlay appear I can make the overlay disappear and in fact the the, the name dr. Fatiha Omar just now and and the question that you see on the screen now uh, is also an overlay okay so uh, I have many other overlays here I can bring into the screen just by by clicking the eyes icon here uh, just like in our model the eyes icon is closed or open just like in Photoshop as well so this actually overlay on the screen um, if you are interested for PC for PC people if you want to do a live streaming just like we are doing now uh, let me show you on the screen now. Um, use this uh, application OBS Studio. As you can see, it is available for Windows. It is available for Mac as well as Linux uh, operating system. So you can uh, download this for free. Watch the tutorial on YouTube. Uh, this is actually a very very powerful um, application but it's not as easy as my ecamm live 
but it's not that difficult as well. So if you want to do live streaming, just like what I'm doing now, try out OBS Studio. Okay. Uh, Dr. Azida, have you used uh, OBS before? Have you tried? Uh, no, not really. Not really, yeah? So, I yeah. tried it, yeah. Uh, OBS, uh, you will love it. You will love it because uh, you can do live streaming to YouTube, to Facebook, to Periscope, uh, and to any other streaming uh, platform. Okay? Uh, so, that is OBS Studio. Okay, now... Um, uh, let me... Okay, uh, Dr. Yani here. She said assessment for engineering based can be done through quiz and assignment in eLearn in our learning management system. Quiz can be in the form of MCQ or short answer. Okay. Um, yeah, Dr. Al, Dr. Al Arifin, OBS. I'm sure you will try it out tonight. <laughs> If you want to try with me, uh, just let me know. I can be your participant. Uh, okay. I'm sure that after this, Dr. R will do the live streaming using OBS. Ah, Najwadi, you are there. So, try OBS, Najwadi. Um, okay, Aziz, I believe the framework. Yeah, uh, Dr. Najwadi, Dr. Aziz here. Dr. Aziz is our, uh, one of our colleagues. Engineering, right? yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Aziz kata, I believe the framework for micro-credential will assist lecturers in planning the delivery and assessment of the subject during this period. Exactly, exactly. Uh, oh, Dr. Shamsul yes. here. Dr. Shamsul also from engineering. Dr. Shamsul said, TL, TNL concept, teaching learning concept and pedagogy must still be intact. But the issue is how to conduct them via online mode. Most of the common online users are okay with the tech, but newbies might be struggling a bit. Well, newbies, um, as I said, if we have, if we had started a few years ago, then we should have no newbies now. Uh, but it's okay. Uh, the newbies now will be the seasoned, experienced user, users in a few months' time. Believe me. So, uh, Okay, yeah. Once the lecturers has get the hang of, of the tools, uh, it become very easy. Yeah, Dr. Said once said, just download OBS. Very powerful. So, Dr. Said, have you used OBS before? Dr. Said is the dean of um, uh, Bahan, school Bahan. Um, Yeah, Dr. Al, he has explored the OBS for streaming before, but still exploring. Yeah, go ahead and explore because uh, OBS actually, uh, be, it has a lot of features, very powerful, uh, but you need to understand the concept. Yeah, the concept of OBS, just like our ECAM, uh, you can have, you can create scene. You can create many scene, one scene for your PowerPoint. Uh, let me let me demonstrate again since uh, um, yeah, okay I have created five scenes on my ecam live currently what you are looking at is this, the first scene where I have invited speaker here uh, Dr. Azida and Dr. Azida is actually uh, is on Skype so I actually can have a Skype window I can ha I can have up to four speakers here but currently we have will be um, the host and dr azida this is the first scene so i'm going to switch to the second scene now the second scene as you can see i'm on my imac <laughs> basically what you are seeing on the screen now uh, just uh, an image a png image and i do some uh, trick here where you see my my webcam actually the video here is uh, is in the iMac, okay? That's the second scene. Now I'm going to, I just use a keyboard shortcut. Uh, so I'm going to the third scene here. The third scene is my, another image, but a smaller one on my iMac. Uh, so you can see me, yeah? Uh, that's the third scene. The fourth scene is my uh, PowerPoint. So I have my PowerPoint. Uh, 
so I can run my PowerPoint on this win on this scene and the fifth scene the fifth scene is my desktop or my uh, in this case my browser so I can uh, run I can show anything on my browser um, easily by uh, going to this so I set up one scene for each uh, each item that I want to share during the online session so now I want to go back to scene one okay you should be able now to see me and Dr. Dr. Azida that's basically the concept of live streaming using OBS studio or using eCam but eCam is much easier the learning curve is very uh, very little uh, very very fast and um, I can also bring in uh, I can bring in overlay for example I bring in the overlay for showing anything on the screen for example as uh, the subscribe overlay here okay so I say okay subscribe to my YouTube then I can uh, take it out just like that okay so that is um, live streaming if you want to try out it's, um, it's quite challenging if uh, even now the, third, the fourth time I do this live streaming then I feel more and more comfortable so you need to do it more um, okay we have Reza, Dr. Reza here uh, Dr. Shamsul say how I wish to have all the Mac devices <laughs> don't cry don't cry Dr. Shamsul uh, you can have it uh, it's a good investment. Uh, all right. Uh, I think we have all the questions uh, already addressed or answered. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I hope I don't miss any question here. Is there any maximum number of screen we could prepare in the background in OBS? Maximum number of uh, sim. Um, yeah, no. Uh, as far as I know, uh, there is no maximum number. Uh, you can set as many sim as you like. Um, usually, you don't set too many. Uh, like I have five sim here just now, as you see. Uh, that's uh, really too too many. Uh, Dr. Muhammad Shihabudin here. What is the best online platform to use to carry out online tests? including the calculation question. So this is a common question, Dr. Azida, that we are not able to yeah. answer uh, well. Uh, the online test, actually there is one, uh, I forgot the name. Um, it's commercial platform, I heard it's very good, but it's also very expensive. Um, mm. Maybe we, we, we will explore this, Dr. Azida, we explore this together. Yeah. Then maybe we, okay. maybe we should have one special session, session. on assessment yeah. on assessment yeah yes we so should do that i think we, we can see from this q and a today uh, there's a lot of um, question and concern about make, doing assessment online uh, which even in the face-to-face -face, uh, situation uh, one one of the weak areas still is on yes. assessment so we need to work on this in fact to me uh, i told dr abbas dr abbas you are here right uh, because Dr. Abbas is an assessment guy. Uh, mm -hmm. Research on online assessment to me is, is very, very um, good area to explore at this point in time. So yes. those doing assessment as a research subject, research area, go for online assessment. We need, we really need this uh, more and more kind of tools, application, and, and ways to do assessment as yeah, well. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, uh, we have someone with uh, I don't know from from where, but there's uh, Tulisa Jawi here. Uh, <laughs> let me Jay. let me try to read. Halati <laughs> bid. Sorry. Uh, what? I I don't know how to how to pronounce it. Uh, I don't know whether from where you are from. Uh, Halati, is it Halati? Uh, from where you're from? Uh, we have Juliana here. Well, uh, I guess um, uh, we have addressed all the questions. Um, maybe finally uh, highlight. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, um, Dr. Sin, Dr. T. 
Dr. T here asked a question this morning. This morning, I share about how to create spot, hotspot in image. What is the app? The app is called Geniali. You can okay. find the link below the video this morning. Uh, I, I give the link to, to Geniali. And I, I plan to do one session specific on Geniali. And I will show I you. I love Geniali. Yeah. Uh, maybe not live session, but I will use, uh, I will record the session first and do a premiere, a uh, YouTube premiere. Then uh, we can also interact through Q&A. And I can focus on your questions. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, we have a question here. Um, just came in from Dr. Noriza Tushairi. What about Wacom? Mm. To do tutorial like Khan Academy. I still have problem using it professionally. And also Doseri. Doseri, yeah. I used to use Doseri with iPad last time. Um, hmm, Wacom. I, I don't use... Oh, last time I used Wacom tablet. Hmm. 10 years ago. <laughs> uh, I still have my Wacom there. Uh, I have not used Wacom when, once I a bit after that when I have I bought uh, when I have uh, iPad, I start using iPad then I forget about I forgot about my Wacom uh, Wacom tablet. But it should be very good. Uh, you still have yeah. problem uh, maybe Dr. Noriza. Uh, well I don't know. Um, let's see whether we can uh, we can do one session on this. I thought Dr. Noriza can teach us how to use Wacom tablet. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Okay. I think so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, one more. I think iPad is uh, good actually for uh, if let's say you have an iPad with a pen, iPad yes. pencil. Yes. yes. And then you use a screencast or matic or whatever screen uh, casting, you will be able to do uh, something like Khan Academy using your iPad. Uh, yes. It can record uh, your screen. Yes iPad is probably expensive, but if you can get one with a pen, that will be marvelous. You can do like Khan Academy one um, very yes. easily. But otherwise, I think you can get any Android uh, tablet and get a decent pen. I don't know what type of pen is best. We can check out uh, the review. Uh, but I saw uh, yesterday, yesterday or two, a few days ago, a few days ago, I saw Pro Prozman using his uh, tablet with a pen, and it seems quite, quite uh, smooth. Uh, so maybe uh, let me try out. Uh, yeah, uh, Khairia said semalam boya boya mic boya microphone Hi. ada promo di Shopee. Oh, is it? How how cheap? Ada tak? <laughs> how how much they sell on on? Uh, I saw someone buy for thirty eight ringgit. So maybe now they are selling for ten ringgit. I don't know. Grab it, grab it. Uh, it's a good microphone. Um, yeah, uh, Dr. Abbas. Uh, you have told me about yeah uh, online assessment. Explore this now. Um, this is something one one area of research that I think people in education should really go into. <clears throat> yeah, Dr. Noriza using iPad now, but still stumbling. <laughs> we, need, we need more practice. Um, yeah, I guess that's about all. So it's already for thirty so one f one hour and one and a half hour uh, already. Uh, I guess I think we have probably enough uh, because we don't want to go too long on the session now. I think it's been quite a successful session. Yes, alhamdulillah. Uh, compared to my session this morning, uh, uh, this afternoon is quite smooth, I guess. Uh, and I, this is my first time for your information. I'm trying my streaming application eCam live doing the Skype at the same time. So again, this is my first time. Uh, seems to be quite uh, successful and quite manageable. Uh, maybe I can do uh, with other speakers. Uh, this uh, next one, maybe Dr. Professor Rosna, maybe Prof. Wan, uh, Wan Zuhaini. But, but Prof. Yes, Wan Zuhaini must be very busy now. Uh, maybe I don't know who else here. Maybe with Dr. Noriza. Maybe can, Dr. Noriza Shari uh, can share your experience and so on. Um, who else do we have here? Dr. Sharifah. Dr. Sharipa, Ruzaina, uh, I think I've invited her. Um, she's uh, still not very sure to... Maybe even Kiman. Kiman, you have a lot of experience, yeah. Kiman. Kiman uh, and good choice. Yeah, Kiman can share something maybe on, I don't know, gamification, something. Um, uh, who else that we have? Some of, people, some of the people here are actually expert. 
expert on their own right uh, who else we have here Najwadi uh, maybe on uh, something else you can also share okay um, my uh, ladies and gentlemen clicks here um, thank you for joining us this afternoon for this Q&A uh, session I think that's uh, I hope we hope uh, the Tazida and I um, hope that we have addressed all the questions uh, some maybe maybe we we don't have the answer the definite answer for the time being but i think one thing that that came out from this session today uh, is about the assessment aspect the assessment aspect that we need to explore especially for those in the engineering mathematics sciences especially that need to use uh, calculation another aspect is lab and studio um, I, I don't know. I don't have the, the clear uh, answer for now, uh, satisfactory answer for you. Uh, another aspect is on the uh, what uh, the proficiency using the tablet, using the Wacom and, and so on, things like that. Um, I think over time we need to practice more. Maybe we use this quarantine time, uh, not, not quarantine, we use the, what do you call this? Um, work from home time to really practice uh, things that can help us with the tools and so on make it more proficient so that we feel more and more comfortable I think it's just a matter of time even for those uh, novice it's just a matter of time within these few weeks and then later a few months where online teaching online class is no longer something alien something uh, you know, um, difficult for all of us. Okay, uh, I look forward to wait for that time uh, when everyone say, "Yeah, online is now is something that we take like face to face." So yes, thank you, Dr. Yes, Azida. Thank you, Dr. Azida, for for uh, you, bro. joining us this afternoon. Thank you, everyone. We will end the session here. Uh, if we uh, as a final thing. If you have any suggestion as to what are the topics that you want us to to do, uh, whether as Q and A or as a recorded video or as a live session, uh, please put in the comment uh, in the chat box specific request for topics, urgent topics that you want to learn uh, from us. Uh, we can also get other experts also to to help us okay so in the chat box request for topics next uh, topics to uh, to be covered that we can cover uh, for you all it's so almost two hours uh, my my timer on this on, on on the screen show is one hour 52 minutes 53 minutes wow. almost two hours <laughs> all right yeah <laughs> okay, so um, I guess uh, I will now uh, stop here. Uh, I'll end this with uh, Assalamualaikum uh, warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to everyone. Uh, have a good rest and continue to explore online learning and online teaching. Thank you so much. See you in the next uh, session. Bye bye.